Hello, everybody. This is from Milwaukee to Nashville. I'm Dana Goodall, and over there is John Lewandowski. Hey. Hi, John. Hey. <laughs> anyway, our show is brought to you by the wonderful folks at Hockey Locker, 2002 West Howard Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. You can call them at 414-800-7585. Or if you have any questions, go to their website at hockeylockermilwaukee.com. Um, also, you can go to the milwaukeeadmirals.com. They are now giving uh, selling, giving out. They ain't giving out season tickets, but they, you can buy season tickets on their website at milwaukeeadmirals.com. Click on their ticket info for more info. Or you can call the Admirals office at 414-227-0550, and they will take care of all of your needs for upcoming season. They have flex plans from 10 to 20 games, um, half season and full full season this year as an added bonus update for you guys. That wow. 365 plan. As well, they do have a 365 plan. Um, it's where they uh, take uh, your balance and whatever you're not putting down. Um, and they, uh, they make monthly payments, I believe, to the beginning of the year. Right. And then you can start your new one as beginning of the next, right at the beginning of the next, you know, as soon as do your, the, the, it flips over, you can start your next one right away if you want to come back. Absolutely. Uh, it's absolutely nice to, to be able to do that because people on a budget can right. that call and, 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 hey, I got a little extra money this month here. Let's throw it and cut down my payments because I may need that five, six bucks next month. Right. You know? So you, you throw them an extra 20, 30, or you give them an extra payment. So you cut out a full payment, you know, um, all those kinds of things. Uh, currently in the NHL, uh, I believe there was only two games today. Uh, yep. uh, the Islanders beat Boston. And uh, currently Montreal and Winnipeg are in OT. I believe it just started. Yes, it did. All righty. All right. So, folks, so you can see, we got the game on. <laughs> yeah. We do pay attention to all things hockey, so we do. Um, and in other news, uh, the uh, Admirals will be playing 76 games. That's where I'm really getting at. 76 games. Uh, the whole Central will be playing 76 games. Yeah. Uh, the East, uh, some teams will be playing 76. Some games will be playing 75, depending on if they want to travel due to COVID. As starting in the 2022-23, 2022-23 season, all teams will be playing 74 games as we add Palm Springs, Seattle's AHL team. Uh, for a year, I think Seattle's probably just going to scatter guys around the AHL to whatever yeah. one of them or wherever they played last in the AHL. If they did, if they got rookies, they'll probably send them to somewhere who's probably, you know, short on prospects or whatever. So right. we'll get into that. Um, so given all of that, we have today, game one of the uh, Kelly Cup playoffs. It's the first game played. The rest of the teams all play tomorrow. <laughs> yep. Um, the Everblades took on the South Carolina Stingrays. We just can't get out of Carolina. <laughs> Game over. Bye bye, Winnipeg. <laughs> there you go. Back to the show, folks. <laughs> just so y'all are knowing, uh, as Preds fans, we don't care for Winnipeg at all. And given what Winnipeg did to them, uh, in the first game, it's deservedly good that they swept them. And congratulations to Shea Weber, former Admiral. Former yes. Um, you're moving on. Um, congratulations to Cole Caulfield as well, Badger. <laughs> but, um, you know, Winnipeg seems to get closer and closer every year. I wouldn't count them out, but we'll Let's get back to what we were talking about. So we did have the Florida Everblades versus the South Carolina Stingrays. Yep. Um, they do. The Stingrays have a former Milwaukee Admiral on their team named Justin Flory. Um, 
as well as our former Everblade, Blake Hillman. Um, so just a little info there. I believe Hillman played a couple games for the Admirals as well. Um, Maybe, uh... so the game was kind of like this, but I'm going to give you a heads up. Quick programming note. This game was really tough to watch and listen to because of where they were. Absolutely. John could fill you in on the watching part. I'll fill you in on the listening part. Uh -huh. Well, they played at the Stingrays practice facility because the, where the Stingrays play was hosting graduation. So with that being said, they had no ability to do instant replay. They had no idea, no ability to, do, to set up cameras for flow hockey in a hurry. Right. They could have known this ahead of time amongst scheduling that they should have said, hey, we'll play Tuesday because we don't got nothing. Right. It's it's just to the point now where it's like you knew this was happening and since when does South Carolina Stingrays hockey undersell I mean, playoff hockey undersell a high school graduation. You could have put that somewhere else. Well, I don't know if it was high school or what. It just said graduation. Yeah. But um, I, uh, I, I, I think it's interesting that how they did this, but I don't like it at all. I think this game should have been rescheduled. But yeah. the game was played. In the first period, shots were 14-11, scoring. Scoring in the first, uh, Leif Kokober with an assist from Ben Masala and Marcus Vela. Those guys lost no touch whatsoever playing together, especially since Kober, Masala, and Vela have all been hurt this season. Right. Um, you know, and uh, it it's hard to to kind of judge what you're going to get there. All right. Yeah. We have uh, Matthew Waste, not the guy that used to sit next to me covering the airplane. Thanks, Matt, uh, for all the work. Um, and then we had uh, assist by Dan DeSalvo and Cole Yuli. Cole Yuli was the leading scorer in all, I believe, all of, no, uh, leading assist guy, I believe, in all of the league. Um, second period was kind of a wash period. It was kind of back and forth, kind of boring. Yeah. It was, you know, Florida out shot him 12 to 9. But, I mean, when when this happens, these things, you could, you gotta gotta come back out with that. You you came hard in the right. third. You gotta come even harder in the third, and they didn't. Um, they yeah. didn't because the Stingrays outshot them twelve to four. And then not only that, you know, uh, in, in in that retrospect, uh, in in the third, you had uh, Michael Neville with an assist by Marcus Vela and Michael Hunterbreaker. Um, Hunterberger has been off the score sheet for about a month now. Yeah. So it's been kind of hard watching him play, but it's good to see him back on the score sheet. Score Absolutely. There when he needed it, when he's needed most. Yeah. Um, then Matthew Weiss scored again with an assist by Caleb Herbert. With OT, OT, Dan DeSalvo scores with an assist by Doyle Summerby. Everblades go down 1-0 in a five-game set. Shots were 34 to 30. They had two shots in OT. Um, in this retrospect, I don't think the guys were exactly 100% ready on both sides. Right. And the reason I say that is I don't think they were ready to play on a, on a practice rink. No, not at all. I think they were ready for a loud arena and be able to come out Everblades would be able to come out and keep them quiet, and and, and they just weren't able to do that, and uh, it it was just weird. Um, in yeah. his plays with Jake Hildebrand, he stepped thirty one of thirty four with a ninety one point one seven six save percentage. Yeah, in net for South Carolina was Hunter Shepard. Hunter Shepard stopped twenty eight to thirty with a thirty. 
Oh, sorry, ninety-three point three three thirty-six percent. Yeah. Um. Today, in the playoffs in particular, they like to go this route. But I'm gonna say this: there's something about this that really irritates me. So I'm gonna get into it. All right. Florida has been really struggling in the power play. And it's really starting to get to me. South Carolina had six power play opportunities. Um, they were one for six. Yeah. yeah. That can make or break a game. Right, it can. Um, I also want to add in that when you have something like this, three stars are a wash. Right. It's just a wash. They had 550 people in attendance. That is not what they're used to. No. Maybe that's what we're used to in a blizzard. Right. But that's during a blizzard on a Tuesday or, or Wednesday. Right. Any other day of the weekend with a blizzard, we got a packed house anyway. It don't matter. Um, Your referees were uh, Nolan Bloyer and Jacob... Ruchucky. 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 I'm trying to get it. Sorry if I butchered your name. Oh, uh, linesman of Brady Fagan and Terrington. What's it? Wise, wise neck. Ooh. Like, they're giving me some uh, messed up linesman's names and refs today. Um, Three stars of the game were Hunter Shepard, Matthew Weiss, and Dan DeSalvo. Yeah. We will be back Wednesday for game two. I will be here. Yeah. I will be here for sure on Saturday for game three. John is a depends on when he's done with what he's doing kind of thing. Right. So um, if it's just me, it's just me, but bear with us. Uh, we all have family stuff to attend to, so that's what he's going to do, and you know, yeah. I took care of my family stuff yesterday, and uh, like I wanted to, I want to do a lot of congratulations to the Montreal Canadiens for moving on. Yes, yep. They are the first team to move on. So, with that being said, Montreal will be playing the winner of Colorado Vegas. Yep, and that's going to be. That's going to be a tough one for uh, for whoever comes out of that because because Montreal's been playing good hockey, right? You know, and and what of the teams that are left, there are no slouches. There I believe, were, if I remember the statistic correctly, the last time they played this well was in '93, and they won the cup. Which, in that case may scare John a little bit for his avalanche. Oh, well, I'm already scared with Vegas, man. They've, they've completely changed the way their game is being played. Yeah, I mean, and that's that's kind of where we're at nowadays. Uh, you know, the teams adapt and watch video and, and they adjust yep. so quickly that at this point, um, the adjustments are are so high and... and, and Difficult you know, to make sometimes. high and skilled and, and, and different because when when you make those adjustments, and, and we're talking about this because the Florida Everblades are going to do that as well. Exactly. The coach is going to look at this and went, okay, well, that game sucked. Let's see what we can fix. Right. Because let's see what we can fix and move on because that's the mentality you have to have in the playoffs or you're going to be in, well, as the old cliche goes, up ships creek without a paddle. Yeah. Upside down. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, and, and, and Winnipeg's proof of that. Yeah. Because they put themselves in that position with Shifley doing what he did, getting suspended. They lost one of their top point getters. It doesn't help. Didn't help what what he did was not necessary to the game. And whatever ha- what he did, the repercussions of it cost them the series. Right. And Montreal didn't have to change anything. Right, no, they didn't. Um, also, I want to add, you know, it's it's just interesting how many of these games are going to OT. Defense right. 
truly showing right now. You cannot have a high-powered offense and bad defense or you will be sitting at home, Toronto and Edmonton. Right. Nashville's sitting at home because they didn't have offense. They had defense and good goaltending. Right. But couldn't get the puck in the net. When that happens, you're not going to win anyway. Yeah. But we'll see what's happening. Um, just a, another note. Uh, what is that? July. Just a programming note for you guys all. Um, July 17th, all teams must have submitted their protection list for the NHL expansion draft deadline, 5 o'clock Eastern time. Right. The 21st is the expansion draft, 8 o'clock Eastern time. John will be here for that. We will be live during that whole thing. Right. If we're able to. Uh, the 23rd and 24th, we're going to try and be live. I believe the 23rd is a, hang on a second here. Bear with me. The 23rd is a Friday. 24th is a Saturday. The 23rd yeah. is a night draft. They start at six o'clock and go forward from there. Um, and then he might as well spend the night because they start at 10 a.m. the next day. <laughs> <laughs> Because I'm going to be real, they start literally 10 o'clock morning, next day, draft, and we're going to be live there as well. Um, we're going to be doing as much work as we can to be making it go as possible quickly and as well as possible as we can. Right. All righty, folks. Uh, those are just some updates from, from us that we will be live during those events, and we will be back to you live after... Friday and Saturday, if possible. Most likely not, but I will try. The, uh, the next game after that, we will for sure be live if it goes to that, if it goes to four, which I hope it does, because <laughs> if it don't, we're out. Right. So uh, we will see you guys later uh, on Wednesday. And I uh, hope you guys enjoy uh, tomorrow. Breathe a little bit, Florida Everglades fans. It'll be all right. Yep. We know how hard it is. This has been from Milwaukee to Nashville. Daniel Grimmel, John Lewandowski, signing off. <laughs>